Um, hello, my name is Matthew, and I've been working my way through the Norton Anthology of English Literature, and I moved on to John Milton. And the anthology has a very large selection of Paradise Lost, and I thought I would break out from the Norton Anthology and just read the whole poem. And I can't say that it's that it was a pleasurable experience, but impressive. It's Paradise Lost is a, a powerhouse of imagination and creativity. It's so alien. It's um, this the story itself is. Um, the battle between good and evil and uh, sa sa Satan being cast out from heaven and uh, Satan warring with God and uh, taking his revenge out on uh, paradise and Adam and Eve. And what makes it, one of the things that makes it so strange and, and uh, astonishing is how there's this is a world without humans the and, and the the stories are told outside of earth so we see this sphere of hell where satan and his other hellish creatures are deliberating and they actually have time to to talk and have discussions they kind of look around and they're unhappy in the, in the sphere of heaven uh, there's God and these other heavenly creatures um, angels and angelic beings determining what to do with with sat Satan and um, this oncoming or ongoing war um, and then even Adam and Eve are decidedly unhuman. They're, they're not, they're, they're still creations of God in a very literal sense. Par paradise, Eden, still isn't earth in any relatable way. Um, th this edition, or just, the poem itself is... Um, really uh, benefited by these um, paragraphs at the beginning of each chapter. There's uh, 12 cantos or chapters in the book, and it'll give you a brief synopsis of what the plot is going to be. Um, the actual poem is just inc incredibly um, rich with description, powerful alien language that has that like eternal feeling to it um, this is a poem that really could just be um, taken for like a sacred document if if this was a, a, a like a holy script it's um, it's extremely b believable that um, this could be considered like one of the books of the Bible or something like that. Um, what made it, what makes it difficult to read now is probably um, the same thing that would have made it very popular or appealing at the time that it was um, written or being read. Um, and it's all of the uh, Christian um, allusions, the uh, Christian mythology, all, all, the, all the references to everything that's in the Bible, and also Greek and Roman mythology. And today, if, if you're not completely entrenched in those stories, um, it, it's, it's an elusive thing to read. Um, my copy has extensive uh, footnotes were, which were really helpful, and I have very rudimentary um, 
notions of, of, of the stories in the Bible and Greek and Roman stories, which was helpful. But at the time that it was written, all of these stories would have been um, just known. It's a part, it would have been a part of your life. These are stories that you would tell to one another. And I, I get the feeling that um, since all of that wouldn't be work and um, and since the poem feels so authentic that it was probably great fun to read. Um, and I, I don't know, I imagine it could have been quite quite, quite controversial, especially with um, Satan. Uh, I've, I've always heard that Satan was like the hero of the story, but um, it's mostly that he's a fleshed out character. We, we, we do get Satan's perspective, but um, I did not get the sense that he's the hero of the story. The, the only thing that I feel that betrays the authenticity of um, the poem is actually the Greek and Roman mythology that runs throughout the whole entire thing. Um, I don't know how else it would be done. The, the whole poem is so alien that I, I just I feel like there, there wouldn't have been any other way around um, conveying universal stories other than Greek and Roman. But um, I don't know how these how those stories would be so entwined in this Christian mythology. Um, I love how it parallels, or it's in like a parallel world to Genesis. All of this is happening um, from the time that uh, the universe has been created until the Garden of Eden. It's, it's all happening around there. So um, in, in hell at the time, there are no souls because there were no people. In heaven, people, there, there weren't um, people that have died and gone to heaven. They're still, and, and, and then they're still populated with these creatures. Uh, re really interesting. Um, something else that was surprising to me, um, or something that, that I noticed, um, all of nearly all of the English poetry that I've read up until this point had rhyme, and I don't know what the decision making could have been, but it's obviously a, a poem without rhyme and. It really works to its benefit because it feels like such a serious-minded poem that the sing-songy nature of uh, any sort of rhyme scheme would have just taken away a little bit of um, like the, the serious nature of the subject matter. Um, so. A deeply, really impressive, astonishing display of cr creating a almost an entirely imagined, believable world um, full of otherworldly beings, um, totally devoid of humanity and human nature, and still conveying all of the qualities that we see in human nature. What, what, is, um, what is good and what is bad? There's underlying themes that, as a human being, that you can relate to. So, um, I, I was impressed by it. Uh, it, was a, an, it was an exercise to read it. Um, so it's certainly not a pleasure reading or pure enjoyment unless you know it wasn't for me but unless you know all of those stories all of the uh, stories in the bible and greek and roman mythology and others because um, it's also aside from the creativity an impressive display of scholarship um, so that's it um I read Paradise Lost. This also has Paradise Regained, which um, I'm not going to be, uh, even though it's so short, I'm not reading it.
the moment. Um, leave a comment if you would like. Let me know if if you've read um, Paradise Lost, if you uh, like it, if you do enjoy it, um, anything like that. So leave a comment if you'd like, and thank you for watching.